Hello everybody, Bill Owen from MNPC Tech. How are you doing? Well, we got some people in the chat already. Welcome to the live stream overview of the Antec P8 Mid Tower case. Good to see you all. Hey, big question for you everybody here in the chat and the comments. Have you ever owned an Antec case? Do you plan to get one? What about you, Moss? So I've got Moss here from the Modzu and Mosquito Mods on YouTube. Have you ever had an Antec case? Yes, I have. I think it was the second computer case, nope, third computer case I ever bought was an Antec. And I started out with a pretty high bar because I started out with a P180 Mini which to the, this day is probably one of my, one of the favorite cases I've ever owned, even still. Mm. I mean, granted. Do you still have it? No, I don't. Oh. I ended up getting rid of it, ooh, three, four years ago. I moved out of my apartment and it was like, well, this thing has been empty ever since I finished Visible Contrast. So I salvaged a bunch of parts, kept the fans, drive cages, that kind of stuff. and. It ended up making a trip to the recycler. Oh, uh, Callan from MVS Mods just dropped in. I still have my Antec Gamer 900, uh, 900 tower. The um, yeah, it was a mid tower, wasn't it? Was I think mid? so. Yeah. yeah, 900 mid tower. That's the one that had the little like tray thing up That's top, right. and then it went up to where the That's fans exactly were. That's exactly right. It had a, and didn't it have a 180 in the roof? 180, something like that. Fan? Yeah. yeah. So um, this just started uh, retailing on Newegg for $89. It's got a tempered glass side panel. Again, it's a mid-tower. There's uh, currently an ATX board in it with a RX 580 video card and a Corsair all-in-one with a single 120. You can put a 360 radiator in the front. Uh, there isn't space to put one in the ceiling, but some of you are modders, right? We, you could do it. Um, but otherwise, it will accept a 240 in the ceiling. Um, taking a look at the back, it does include 320 millimeter fans, one as an exhaust and two in the front. Um, just an observation, you can only put a 120 in the back. It doesn't have the option for a 140, which we see a lot of uh, mid towers offering today. Yeah, they're also non-slotted, so it's going to be there. <laughs> you have no choice. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you... You do have a decent amount of room before you end up hitting your PCI slot. So yeah. with your AIOs, you know, you can put the radiator hoses on either side. I don't think that's going to be an issue. So, yeah, I mean, eh. it'd be nice if you could adjust it a little because it's not like there's really anything else going on. Mm -hmm. We don't have the specs on these fans. I don't know if they're new or not. I tried to find the specs on them online. There wasn't any information. Uh, looking at the back PCI covers, um, this is something um, I'm not personally a big fan of is the punch out style PCI covers. You do have one that is removable at the very top. Otherwise, they're the punch out style. Um, this is a cost saving measure. I'm sure some of that money has gone into the uh, tempered glass side panel. Yeah, that's probably true. I mean, we were kind of chatting about it earlier too, and as much as I hate the knockouts, I they do look better than... They actually do clean <laughs> nice and sleek, yeah. And they just, they match the finish of the rest of the case and that kind of stuff. I'd rather have these finished in the same as these, but whatever. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird, because you don't see that so no, much anymore not really mm. not unless you're looking at like really low-end cases for like what 39 dollars or the ones that aren't really <laughs> they're not really finished they're not painted right. they're exactly. just <laughs> steel <laughs> yeah um i love the front bezel on it and it reminds me a lot of antec style that kind of little industrial flavor um minimalistic yet stylish the venting that Antec was one of the first to have that style of venting. A vents event, right? I mean, give us our vents. There's only so much you can do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the logo in the front is illuminated, and to me, that's Antec saying, hey, don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. Um, Antec, as a lot of you know, has been an industry uh, goliath uh, in this hobby for decades, and... Uh, yeah, so they're like, hey, we're going to make a statement with this one. 
it is a Mullix connection for that illuminated logo, which I'm not a fan of the Mullix connection, but you know, I had to like, you know, deliberately go into my power supply cable bag and get out a Mullix connector. <laughs> right, where did I put those <laughs> stupid things? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you're right, uh, Joe the Tech Dragon. You says you could mod the heck out of that front panel. Absolutely, it's a blank canvas, isn't it? It is, and it's also that was actually went really well. Um, it's also held in by screws. So this metal panel here, it appears to be screwed in. That's a good thing. So if you wanted to, it looks like it'd be pretty easy to, or if you wanted to paint it, it'd be yeah. really easy instead of trying to. You know, I like that. Tape around all that stuff. But obviously, look, it stands up on its own. <laughs> yeah, those of you that watch our live streams, Moss <laughs> isn't a fan of these uh, umbilical cord style front bezels that you just can't simply just take right off the front of your case and walk away from and clean it, you know, somewhere. And um, you're, you're stuck to uh, like an anchor to your PC. Yeah, I mean, I understand. The way this is set up, that's kind of going to be a requirement. But this doesn't have to be. No. Come no. On. But the advantage, like we were talking before, a 360 doesn't fit in the roof. So if we just take one and stick it up there, you end up, you know, sticking out the front a little bit. But because all your I.O. is over on the side, you actually do have room if you wanted to cut some space out. I think you'd be able to fit a 360 yeah, in there. Yeah, you could you put just, a 360 in the front. You just have yeah, to cut out no the front like base. that. So. Absolutely. Um, there is a removable front screen once you take that bezel off. And you have the option to put three 140 fans in the front. Um, 140 radiator, ooh, I don't, I, there's a notch in the power supply shroud. You're probably not gonna put a, one, uh, a 140 in the front. We can measure the width on that notch though. It is 60 millimeters deep, so you can put radiators up to 60 millimeters thick. Um, the width we need to measure. Do we still have that ruler around? There it is. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> Well, we might have See to, if you can try to. Do you want to wait till we get the tempered yeah, glass? Yeah, so we might have we'll to okay, come back we'll to that because we don't remind have that. us if we don't measure that. Um, but yeah, just a plastic and PVC mesh. Yeah, standard attire. Pretty basic, just two tabs. So the only way you get it out, you got to bend it a little. Yeah. No big deal, but it's nice that it's it's easy to remove. We'll we'll touch on that again later. The common recurring theme with more budget-friendly cases is the bottom mesh. Not so good, but what do you do? What is your initial reaction of the uh, exterior design of this case? Now, I know some people, when I posted a picture this morning that we're doing this live stream, are like, oh, that looks like the fractal design, uh, or that looks like the silver stone. Um, I like the look of this case, and... Uh, I do too. And it's also, it's, it's one of those things where it's a budget-friendly case. A lot of people are making budget-friendly cases. They're generally all very similar. So I think the thing that the thing that really sets the cases apart is probably pretty much just the front panel. The front bezel is about the only thing that really changes because a tempered glass panel is for the most part a tempered glass panel and the tops are usually about the same. You know, you get a fan filter of some sort and a bunch of mesh for your fans, but I like it too. It, and that's something that I said right away too, is it It looks like an Antec. I, I mean, you know, obviously, <laughs> you know, that gives it away. But it, even without that, you'd look at this and go, okay, that looks like an Antec case, or it looks like a variation on something that I've seen from Antec before. And I like that because to me, it's just, it's one of the more modern friendly case companies yeah. out there. Like they, they seem to understand that modders are out there. And so maybe just something that's easily to, easy to mod, but not necessarily ridiculous over the top with features is, is sometimes the thing I like more than anything, so. Well, yeah, like Joe the Tech Dragon said that he's probably already got mod ideas for it. Um, I am gonna modify this case uh, 
and I've chosen the theme is going to be uh, a tribute to, well, even though the movie hasn't come out yet, the new Blade Runner 2049 movie. I'm going to do a theme inspired by that, by the artwork that's uh, currently uh, promoting the movie. Um, I may do something as crazy as painting this thing a pastel color. Oh, chalk paint. <laughs> Go with chalk paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Moss has taken off our side panel, which looks a lot like the tempered glass one from the Meshify that we did a live stream on a couple of weeks ago. It's got that black border on it. Oops, we had that on backwards. <laughs> oh, it was on backwards? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't That's matter. Me. It doesn't matter that much, but I mean, yeah, it's lightly tinted and they have this black stripe all the way around on all four sides to hide all the garbage again that's it's seeming to be pretty standard on most of these tempered glass side panels now so that's kind of nice to see and it's nice to see that they didn't just run out and grab a sheet of tempered glass drill some holes in it and then slap it on the case so nice little finished touch and but. these manufacturers uh in in china they're going to a factory that specializes in doing glass work um, and it could even be just one factory over there because we're seeing similarities in these side panels. Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's a sheet of glass. Exactly. <laughs> you can only exactly. do so much with it. I like the shroud design and like the venting on it. Yeah, this actually, it, these are actual vents too. Mm -hmm. I just noticed that when we were looking at it before. They're, they're not just stamped ridges. They are actually open. Not that you need that much airflow because there's an exhaust on the or an intake on the bottom that you can use for the power supply and you have all this space up here and the other side also has a bunch of intake space too so it's it's not like you're going to starve this area for air but it's just i don't know it's, yeah, it's got plenty of ventilation it's it's, it's fine um there is two ssd mounting points uh trays on the power supply shroud and uh, you can mount a total of it. What was it, the count that we came up with? Uh, Six of them, I think. Including the uh, three and a half inch drive trays inside. We'll take SSDs, of course. There is a, uh, what we do, uh, we've also got an empty P8 here as well. So we can show you that uh, without a system inside. Um, but here you can get an idea of what the cable management was like. There's uh, two SSD mounts on the back side of the would have, which would have been a uh, you know five and a quarter or, or three and a half inch drive bay. Um, the, we're seeing a, 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 a was it a remnant of a chassis design that this was based on that actually had two five and a quarter bays up on the top. That's what it looks like. Yeah. There's plenty of space back here. Um, I didn't go hog wild and make it perfect, but yeah, you can see it's pretty decent and clean for the cable management. I would like to see more standoffs stamped on the back side of the motherboard plate. More than we had last time. Yeah, there's more than the last <laughs> case we looked at uh, last week, that's for sure. Um, also, the uh, three and a half inch drive bay, it holds two. Um, it will slide back and forth to allow space for the power supply installation and removal. The only way to put it in is from the back here. Um, there's thumb screws on the bottom of the chassis uh, on, on grooved holes to uh, move that back and forth or remove it all together. Should we make the switcheroo here, Bill? The switcheroo. Okay, we'll go to the uh, empty carcass. Well, don't call our case an empty carcass, Bill. <laughs> that doesn't sound, that sounds very negative. It's just a shell that of what it used very to be. Morbid. Hey, look at that. See how fast we are? Very Fastest good. screwdrivers Fast in the West. <laughs> yeah, so if we take a look here quick, just at what he was talking about earlier, there's the four thumb screws that you can loosen and then this whole three and a half inch drive tray can move. So if you don't need the fan and radiator space up front and you need room for a longer power supply or just to shove all of your extra cables, you can do that. Or you can slide it all the way back, make room for your radiator plus fan. You just, you know, it's a trade-off. If you're gonna leave that in there and have a radiator, your power supply 
it's gonna have to be a little bit shorter or you're just gonna have no room to manage your cables but like he said there's plenty of room back here so I don't think I don't think cable management would be that bad unless you were running like a well you're not gonna run quad SLI are you two four six oh you could but yeah you know if, unless you're going crazy and you have quad a quad SLI of, did you say the quad word one two three four five six <laughs> nope nope seven you can only do three-way but yeah, unless you were doing that and you had you know power cables out the wazoo, you really shouldn't have any problems, I don't think, with cable management. I haven't seen any new quad builds for a while, actually. Only mining rigs. Oh yeah, excuse <laughs> but me. But then they're probably not SLI either. They're probably right. Crossfire. Yeah. Yeah. Something that was kind of neat that we noticed when we were just browsing their description page. So the side panels here. For the tempered glass, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them off of the case, but I took off the little rubber washer grommet thing that holds the glass panel. These are just standard standoffs, mm -hmm. and we noticed on their description page that it said tempered glass side panel, like single tempered glass, whatever, something along those lines, and then second tempered glass side panel is an optional accessory. So I don't know if they do offer it yet, but that makes it sound like you should be able to buy a tempered glass side panel standalone mm -hmm. and probably get the standoffs and those little rubber grommets and thumb screws as a kit because the chassis is threaded on both sides in these four corners for both sides. So you could, you know, have a tempered glass panel on the other side or acrylic or whatever that's kind of neat but i don't know that i've ever really felt the need to have a glass panel on that side well if you're a, a modder like callan for example and he's going to do a build for like a booth at a show and he really wants to show off custom sleeving yeah, that's true um go for it um Maybe I'll do something like, well, I'll, I'll completely turn the chassis upside down and turn it into uh, an inverted or BTX layout, and then maybe I'll consider using those threaded holes or something. Who knows? Carbon fiber side panel. <laughs> I suppose if you wanted to make a custom ah. side panel, that'd be pretty easy too. Lofty, uh, he's in Bangladesh. He's our fan over in Bangladesh, um, and it's what probably... Uh, two or three in the morning there. He says, is the small square notch under the rear 120 millimeter fan meant for a fan controller or a light switch? Yeah, if you take a look at that little, you probably, oh, it's 11 a.m. Oh, okay, it's morning, huh? You could probably find one for that. Oh, 4 11 a.m., excuse me. <laughs> 4 11 is a little different than 11. <laughs> There's mutators, check it in. I, he, I haven't heard BTX in ages. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I've actually he was talking uh, G5 case modding earlier. Yeah, G5 and uh, X the uh, Dell XPS, XPS 720 is BTX. But yeah, I mean, I, I always think of those as what the not necessarily serial, but the serial or comports and stuff that you used to have. But it's not stamped for holes or anything, so maybe. I don't know what you would use it for. You can use it for whatever you want. Yeah, whatever you want. Hmm, interesting. Um, Lofty, in um, Bangladesh, is Antec a big popular name there? You know, Moss and I were talking about how you could get Antec cases and hardware at Best Buy, not online, but actually going to the retail stores. Um, and then, uh, of course, Micro Center, which is still you know open today. Um, but uh, Circuit City, those of you... Remember Circuit City that are in the States um, and CompUSA. Um, and if, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that Walmart at one point had um, Antec cases and hardware you get. Now, the selection was limited to like maybe two or three different models. Yeah. He says, not popular, but range of cases from brand are very, very limited. Right. Yeah. His not too surprising i guess what haven't we covered we haven't really looked at the top or the bottom yet have we yeah 
So we'll take a look so at this. There isn't a lot of head space in the top for uh, wide radiators, gang. It's mostly, um, you're looking at thin radiators. It was really designed for all-in-one coolers, 240s. Although you're thinking, hey, could I put a 360 up there? Eh. If you want to cut a hole on the front, I think so. Yeah, you have to cut a hole in the front. Magnetic fan filter for the top. Pretty run-of-the-mill standard on these budget-friendly cases. But I like them. They work. They're easy to remove. You don't have to tear apart a bunch of steel tabs to get to it, so that's a plus. Wouldn't mind one of those on the front, and especially wouldn't mind one on the bottom, but we'll cover that later. You have room for your 120 or 140 millimeter fans. The 120s are offset a little bit towards the side panel, but not a whole lot. And similar to what he just said, there's not a ton of space between the top and the and the uh, motherboard. If I just set that up there for now, but it's yeah, it's it's not really. Um... This case wasn't engineered for the DIY custom loop yeah, crowd. Especially if you were going to go with a thick radiator like this Hardware Labs Black Ace Nemesis. You know, it, yeah, it'd be no, here. <laughs> plus fans. Hey, Moss, we'll fit in the front. Oh, wait, we were going to measure the um, the width of that gap in the shroud. Yes, here you go. We were. Mod ruler. Let's see, you get about 140, one and a half, maybe 142 millimeters. Yeah, so you're not going to put uh, your 140, 140 millimeter rims. radiator better be 140 millimeters, <laughs> which let's see, dark side might be about the only thing that I would be able to think of. Maybe right. like some of those smaller coolants even mm -hmm. oh, what's the one austin um valiant souls i think on the mod zoo he had that black orchid which was the silverstone fto3 i'm trying to remember what he used for radiators Super thin. they were like oh they were one of those brands that have been around for magical but, yeah there you go All magical right, yeah they might be the only other ones that i can see fitting mm -hmm. you know a 140 but again it's just metal go ahead take it take it to the file and yeah make it wider because you certainly have space you just have to make it <laughs> yeah um the power supply shroud is pop riveted in yep um well, how about the bottom we looked at the bottom yet not yet ah Moss's favorite hey. filter yeah, and these are your thumb screws again, but yeah, it's, you're not going to remove that without flipping your case over, that's for sure. Well, remove it maybe, because these are never that difficult to get out, but duh. <laughs> Lofty says, 30 second filter installation test. Um, okay, we'll time you in how to reinstall it. Ready? Set. 1001, Go. 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009. See, that one's. Okay, 10 seconds. That one's not as bad. <laughs> this one's not as bad because it's just a rectangle and there's only six tabs. And they're all on each end. So you can kind of, you know, do one of these to get there it under go. those tabs. There's the technique but right there. They're still obnoxious. But here's the thing, though, Moss. With your system in it, when you go to clean, you've got to, like, tip it on its side like this in order to do that, you know? It's yep. just versus just having a nice slide-out tray out the back. I can see where you're not going to get a slide-out out the front with this design. Right. But that is always my preference, is when you get a plastic tray that you can either slide out the side or out the front. Because... You have all your wires hooked up on the back. You may not be able to pull it away from the wall enough to get a fan filter out, even if it does slide out the back. But yeah, anything with a plastic tray is better than these things. Yeah. But that said, I'd rather have one versus not, so. Now inside I noticed uh, the power supply rests upon like these big sugar cube 
padded. Antec brought the sugar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get these little foam rubber. I don't know what's the best angle for that, Bill. Yeah, right there. There? Yeah, there you go. You can see them there. Yeah, so you get the little foam cube here. And that's just uh, a little thing to have the power supply rest on rather than having it rest just straight on the steel. I'm oftentimes curious if those are really necessary. It seems like a lot of case manufacturers have them or, you know, rubber standoffs or something. But it's like, well, if my power supply was making enough vibrations to actually make a lot of noise, I would be concerned about the power supply, not, you know, isolating the noise. So... <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. Um, do you remember, like, well, I remember when power supplies would kick in at a certain temperature. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... Uh, or the older, when they were, like, 80 millimeter fans based exactly. rather than being 120. That's exactly right. And that's like, well, that was, yeah, early 2000s. <laughs> um, and how many times have you opened up a brand new case and the little power supply tab or a little dampener stickers are like free falling yeah. all over because that adhesive wasn't that good from the factory. Or it got warm in a shipping container exactly. coming across the ocean. Yeah. 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 Um, there, I see there is venting on the bottom of the front bezel. Um, so there isn't venting on the, on the right hand side, but at the very bottom there's, there's some venting on it. Yep. And there's also not on the top. Nope, not on the top. Oh, and so we have for our um, inputs, we've got two 3.0 USB, headphone mic jack, power reset, and... Power and hard drive activity lights. Yep, your basics are all covered there. Um, so I've got a tackle. I'm doing a Blade Runner 2049 theme. I'm kind of like juggling different ideas in my head. If you have any, by all means, um, suggestions, just post them in the comments. Um, and also in the comments, let us know, have you ever owned an Antec case? Which model did you own? Antec's been around for a few decades. Um, Moss and I were trying to uh, think of how many different Antec cases we've owned over the last uh, 15 years or so. Honestly, I think I've only ever owned three. What was your first one? Uh, P180 Mini. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a great one because it had the. Um, it was based off the P180 Tower, which was the first um, consumer PC case to have sound dampening properties in it. The um, thing was heavy, super heavy, because the <laughs> side panels had multi layers of material. Yeah, they were like steel, and then there was an acrylic panel in the middle, and then plastic on the inside, and that whole thing was heavy. And I think it was one of the first cases with the dual chamber design like now we have all these power supply shrouds but yeah. back then it was just literally a, f a whole floor right in the middle that went from side to side and then your power supply was underneath i think there was a pair of five and a quarter inch bays in the bottom and then a single one up in the top for the mini and then your three and a half inch drive cages were in the middle so really that case could probably be reintroduced today you just get rid of the five and a quarter inch bays and the three and a quarter inch cages mm -hmm. and it pretty well fits in with what we've got today so that's right yeah it is it is the, this is the uh the the look right now that's trendy uh tempered glass side panel power supply shroud those are two features you have to have to be a player now um to get attention and uh, Whaler 99 just dropped in years ago. They were the brand to own, not so much now. Had many though, through the years, before Corsair, NZXT, Fantex, and the like became more popular. He had an Antec 900 and 1200. Yeah, yeah, there was, oh man. I lo I'd love to hear the, the uh, production count of how many of those cases they made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I've done many different mods for Antec over the years. Had a good relationship with, with them. I think I've done, I don't know, at least five different mod projects for uh, CES or for giveaways. And um, this Blade Runner 2049, once I'm done with it, Antec, I'm giving them the choice to do whatever they want with it. If they want to give it away or um, use it at a show or whatever. So, yeah, I... 
my uh, well here let me break down my um, pros and cons that I've come up with for the P8 um, the rear 120 millimeter that being the only fan option I was a little disappointed about that because mid towers now on the market most of them have the option for either 140 or 120 um, the bottom power supply filter screen just it would be easier to have it if it was a tray and it slid out um, another observation was uh, when I put the uh, when I was doing the cable management on the system build yesterday there wasn't any um, convenient routing holes for the fan wires you either had to go to the very top or the very bottom and those of you that put systems together know that when you do that you're taking up that extra slack in your wire and you may not reach the three pin connector on the motherboard when you do that so it makes I mean we've as enthusiasts we've gotten so much more pickier about cable management especially if we share our builds online and people will scrutinize if things just look a little sloppy or out of place uh, but pros overall I really like the design it's yeah I I can I'm excited to do something with this um, the f and the fact that you, you can fit a 360 radiator in the front uh, I think the illuminated front logo is clever, clever although it's a Mullix connection and I had to uh, go back to my power supply bag and get out a Mullix connector which I haven't <laughs> done for quite a while um, uh, I do love that you've got multiple spots for SSDs you can put up to um, seven SSDs or is it six 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 two inside and then um, two on the back wall here and then you got the option to put uh, SSDs instead of three and a half inch drives in the cage in the bottom um, but overall I like the look of it um, it's little little industrial flavor with the vents and that and it's simple and stylish it's not trying to make like a big statement yeah I I would agree too that I like it I don't I mean it's not like you're getting a ton of features or an extremely flashy case or anything like that but I can't say that I'm usually attracted to those cases for the most part anyway so I I think it's it's very Antec yeah you know the the finish quality is noticeably nice yeah like that's one of the first things that I noticed too is like man this the finish it just feels better I don't know if it is or not but it certainly feels pretty nice that's not flimsy it's solid um, the floor itself if you just push pressure on the floor and the bottom the bottom floor on the inside yeah yeah that's the only little weak spot and the top is a little bit yeah. that way too but it's a you know it's a panel that's nothing attached to it it's an $89 <laughs> case of a tempered glass side panel so we were right around the price point where these are going for in the market. Um, something else I want to bring up: uh, when I shared pictures this morning, and you know, people are recognizing that it looks like other cases on the market, and that um, it's a trend that we're in right now. Uh, like Moss said, it's you're gonna, you know, RGB muta mutator says you got to have the RGB element too, which this doesn't have. I'm not totally dependent on RGB in my life I mean <laughs> I, can, I know it's cool for mods and stuff but um, um, a lot of these case manufacturers uh, uh, if I were to you know pull back the curtain and reveal the wizard a lot of these case manufacturers share well they're not really manufacturers they're case companies that share the same factories in China to make their cases so it's not uncommon for a uh, Corsair fractal design and uh, NZXT case to be made by a specific factory um, on the same assembly line. Um, it's just a matter of what direction this case company wants to go and what features they want to highlight. So when people, I posted something on Twitter and somebody said, well, that looks so much like the uh, Silverstone that I see a lawsuit or something, something like that. I'm like, no. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, manufacturer in China. Yeah, and this is just so. the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there's this cross-pollination that's always going to go on in this industry. Yeah, I mean, really, 
it's a basic computer case. There's only so much you're going to do for the inside. Yeah. So the things that really set it apart uh, from an aesthetics standpoint is at this point the front panel. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, a tempered glass panel is more or less a tempered glass panel. Yeah. A basic top panel is going to look the same for most cases. So it's it's just one of those things. Is does it look like X? Probably. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> well, like in with the the just the, means they're paying attention. Right. And there's a remnant. You can see it right here of the five and a quarter bay. The sidewall was from something else. So what they're doing is they're just answering what consumers want today. There's this uh, large majority of people that don't want five and a quarter bays in their builds anymore, and they want the tempered glass and they want a power supply shroud. So Antex just following the trend. Um, but it is good to see them back, I think, being a player again. I, I'd be curious to see if they're going to come up with any other new designs. Um, yeah, so let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, you know, once the live stream ends, then the chat closes up and it just diverts to uh, comments only for the video. So, Moss, what is your final thoughts? My final thoughts, if I was looking for something in this price point, it would probably be one of the top choices there. And when we've looked at a lot of these cases, you know, when I say these cases, I mean the cases in this kind of 60 to yeah. 60 to even a hundred dollars, yeah. you know, and I think so far this might be one of my favorites. Yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to do something with it. I haven't decided yet, but uh, yeah, like, uh, Joe the Tech Dragon said, it's it's a blank canvas, you know, uh, if you're into custom modding. So, yeah. Uh, let us know before we close the live stream if you've got any questions before we close it up, gang. Um, we appreciate you dropping in each week. You know, Lofty, you got to give him props. It's uh, <laughs> past four in the morning over there. He's a loyal supporter, and he's always got uh, interesting questions or feedback. It's always nice to have the added perspective of all of the people that watch live. To yeah, we love it. We love seeing you guys in the chat. And we're just we're trying to offer a different format here. And we hope down the road to improve our resolution. Um, we've got to kind of change the infrastructure in this old warehouse in order to allow that. But we're, we're looking into it as an option. Just be patient with us. Um, uh, somebody just dropped in water cooling, uh, Verender. Um, well, your options for water cooling is it will take a 360 radiator in the front up to 60 millimeters thick. Wow. Um, the ceiling is really designed for 240. You could put a 360 in there, but you're going to have to do some modification. So if you're looking at like a custom loop, I, you're going to have to do some mods with the P8. Um, Probably. Yeah, I mean... Know. The easy would be a 240 in the top, and then you throw your reservoir over here and your pump right there or something. Or you could put the pump below. If you wanted to put a 360 in the front, eh, it'd be a little tighter, but I mean, there's still plenty of room in here. But yeah, if you're planning on doing multiple radiators, 240 and a 360 is probably about realistically the biggest pair or the biggest combination that you're going to end up with but possible but i don't think that's truly what the aim was so no it's really this is really aimed at the all-in-one market uh as joe the tech dragon mentioned in the chat um whaler 99 says uh i would say though one of the better looking budget cases recently and yeah we've been on this uh streak we didn't even plan this out that we've just been doing like either budget or mid mid range <laughs> cases um and these live streams just because they're so popular now especially with the tempered glass at this price point people are eating them up um i think they resonate with a lot more people too like especially in the modding community if you're starting out or you just like modding for the sake of modding that's a problem that i have is i really enjoy modding and scratch building so i end up with like eight different HTPCs at my house and only four screens to attach them to because I just enjoy it. And sometimes doing it with cheaper cases is nice because then you don't blow your entire year's budget on the first project. 
Yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, yeah, most people are just going to use one video card and when they build the system in this case. Most likely. Yeah. Yep, it's, it's got its uh, yeah, pros and cons. Um, yeah, uh, but I like it. Bottom line, I like it. Um, that's about it. Uh, so, uh, uh, how thick is the uh, glass panel? It's your typical, what is it, 3 16 Yeah, maybe. probably. It doesn't look like quarter. We can measure the millimeters on it for, uh, it looks like they may be overseas, what the thickness is in millimeters. Uh, well, it doesn't fit in 3 16 It's too big. I mean, 3 16 is too big, and it's bigger than eighth inch. <laughs> so what's it in millimeters? Let's see, 5 30 seconds. Um, where's, it looks like one, two, maybe four. Four millimeters, okay. Three and a little over, or a little under four millimeters thick. How long of a PSU? How long would it fit in the case? Yeah, you can check that too. By the way, that three and a half inch drive is completely removable if you want. Yep, um, so, so in theory, the entire length of the case if you needed it. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you absolutely needed a power supply that somehow ended up this well, long. Well, they're asking if you, if, you, if you leave the drive cage in. Is that as far as it goes up front? Yep, that's as far forward, and we end up at wrong way. Yeah, you could put a uh, 240 rad in the front if you wanted. So where this is right now is 250 millimeters. Okay. And that'd be a pretty big power supply. I feel like, so this is 180 to here, and that's probably more common. So here's 180, and if you remove the drive, I mean, you, you obviously have that whole thing, but if we go ahead and we loosen up these screws. Which is difficult to do underneath here. There. So if we move this drive cage all the way back, then you end up at 200 and call it seven. 200, well, 200, 205 millimeters would be a pretty safe range if you don't need to worry about wires. But, you know, again, you have your 180 is right there and 160 is here. So mm -hmm. decent amount of space there. Yep. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning again. Uh, we should hopefully be back again next Thursday with uh, another case. Maybe we'll surprise you, do something completely unexpected. Not tell them what it is? Uh, not tell them, or like just maybe a case that they're not expecting or something. Check it out. This is my Milwaukee <laughs> circular saw <laughs> plastic blow mold case. Ah! Yeah, maybe. Uh, have a good day, Lefty. Um, everybody in the chat, thanks for joining us. We love seeing you each week. Uh, we should be back again next Thursday around the same time. Usually we get these started around, oh, around 4, 4.30 p.m. Central Time. And we always do uh, MMPC Tech's fan page first. And if you're on Twitter, you can tweet at either me or Moss. I'm at MMPC Tech. And what is your Twitter handle? Oh, geez, probably the Mosquito. Hang on. Pretty sure it's Monskito. I'm so bad at this stuff. I don't remember my own crap. <laughs> uh, let's see. For me, it is, yep, at the Monskito. All right. All and if you word. want to subscribe to Moss's YouTube channel, there I, it is right there. I hope, mods. I hope to have a mod soon that I'm going to be <laughs> sharing on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I hope to make a couple of videos of it. But. You've got, you're doing a lot of mod talk. I mean, so at some point we're going to expect some something brought into the shop to show off for sure. Absolutely, and it has been here before. <laughs> so we'll go with that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, call tonight, everybody. Thanks for watching, and uh, make sure you know all the same, the same pitch.
share and like, leave comments and questions and feedback and all that good stuff. We appreciate it. Um, and let us know what you want to see. You know, if there's if there's a particular case or a particular price point genre. Of oh my gosh! Whatever. You know what you're gonna do to these? <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna, I want to <laughs> see you do an H yeah, Tower. It's yeah, gonna be good like luck. a four hundred dollar Leon Lee that I can't get. Yeah, well, <laughs> be realistic, but you know. Well, I mean, because I mean, we we kind of started looking at budget cases when somebody brought up you know like hey what do you what? they wanted to see budget stuff uh, but we did not dictate the ones that we got it just turned out the timing was right manufacturers offered what what we've seen well, i think we picked out the master light, master light. i bought because yep. i bought that off amazon prime shipped to me for like 44 dollars yeah the cooler master master box light 3.1 and that right now has been our most popular live stream since we started doing this for views. Hmm. You know, so yeah, people are all about saving money and, and the convenience of Amazon Prime. I mean, getting a case like the next day, yeah, you know, ship free. Or, well, no, that wasn't free. It was like four bucks. I think it's on Prime now, but uh, yeah, well, yeah, we'll figure out something. And I, I've got my, uh, my, tentacles out there to uh, feelers with the manufacturers that I've had long um, uh, long relationships with in some regard or another about uh, getting samples to us so we can keep sharing something new so all right everybody I think that's a wrap all right take care everyone have a good day or night wherever you are <laughs>